everyone, how's it going today? Uh, today we're going to be looking at a great melody, um, this fiddle tune called Squirrel Hunters. I'm sure a lot of you have played it in uh, jam circles or in bands before. Uh, it's a great modal tune, and by modal that means that it's not really major and it's not really minor. Uh, it's in the key of A, um, but it's very ambiguous as to which color um, the tune is kind of based around. So that's a cool aspect of this tune, and there's a lot of other tunes in, in bluegrass and string band music that kind of use that sound. Um, so yeah, the, the, there's two different versions uh, of this melody that I'll demonstrate today. Um, one's in the lower register of the bass, and one's in the next octave above that. Technically, you could probably play it an octave above that as well, but um, I didn't even do that myself when I was working on this. Um, these two are the ones that really resonate and sound clear on the instrument. So, a um, couple things to think about before I play through the tunes. Um, I'm going into a horizontal hand position for these tunes. That means that uh, I'm not playing, you know, in this traditional vertical shape that we would play a bass line on. You know, that's kind of the, the shape that I'm using more um, when I'm playing a bass line. I'm going into this horizontal shape. You know, and that allows me to have more clarity for my running eighth notes. And you're gonna hear a lot of eighth notes in this melody. Um, all those together, um, a lot more clarity with a horizontal hand position than vertical. So um, it's something that I thought about a lot, and I think going forward I'll be using that um, when we're playing pizzicato fiddle tunes. I think it's just clearer on the instrument. So that's one thing. Another thing is you'll be hearing a lot of uh, notes that are articulated separately, like that phrase, each one has its own pluck. Then there's other phrases that incorporate what I call hammer-ons and what honestly everyone calls hammer-ons, which means you pluck a note and then you finger a new note on your left hand and you get a really cool sound. Um, for instance, this phrase has some. So for instance, the C sharp to D, I only plucked once with my right hand, but I'm putting my fingers down on my left hand to get that new D. And then same thing, A to B. And then separate there, going from G to A. So you're gonna see some hammer-ons. You're also gonna see a slide in the higher version of the melody in this first phrase. Sliding down from the F sharp to the E. So in the notation, you'll see the slide marked by a, a straight line. The hammer-ons will be marked by little arches, which are called slurs. So when you see a slur marking in that notation, you'll know to hammer on those two notes. And then articulated notes separately are just gonna kind of look as is, they'll be blank. Um, and if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out. So those are kind of the, the different articulation techniques I'm using. Um, and then otherwise, um, fingering will be labeled accordingly as well. So be on the lookout for that. Again, pointer finger is one, middle finger is two. Um, we are gonna be using our ring finger in this thumb position phrase for those who wanna get more advanced. That's three, and pinky is four. And then thumb is gonna be T, T for thumb. So um, I'm gonna start with the lower range melody and I'm gonna play it slowly. Um, not too slowly though, cause you can always slow it down using that little settings button at the bottom of the video. Um, and you'll be able to see everything in action. Um, so I think the best way to learn this fiddle tune is gonna be a, a mixture of the visual component, like this video, and the written component, um, either the notation or the tab. Use those two together and work slowly and you should have it um, under your belt um, after a while of practice. So here's the lower range version of Squirrel Hunter's Melody. One, two, three, four.
um, you'll notice on some of these faster passages, I'm giving accents to certain notes. Let's take this B part phrase, for instance. Um, if I didn't accent any note, it would sound like this. You know, very even and a little bit dry. What I'm doing is accenting the back beats, beats two and four of the measure. And that gives a lot more groove, you know? So you'll see that marked with a little accent sign in the score, a little, uh, you know, mouth, I guess you can call it, <laughs> or a little uh, sideways triangle, might be the best way to put it. Um, but yeah, that's an accent mark. So that means you're gonna give a little bit more power to that note and less to the ones around it. So um, I'm gonna play the higher version of the melody now. And um, this one goes into thumb position, you know, so I'd really recommend doing the, the lower range one first, and then you can explore the higher. Um, definitely go check out my thumb position 101 video uh, if you have any questions about thumb position. Um, don't just try to dive into this head on before you learn this kind of the basic concept behind thumb position and what we need to do differently with our bodies to achieve a good sound up there. So um, check that out if you haven't already before going into this. Um, but here's the higher melody version of Squirrel Hunters. One, two, three. So there's those two versions of Squirrel Hunters for you. Um, yeah, feel free to reach out again and uh, slow down these videos. They uh, can be a great tool to learn uh, all the fingering and uh, kind of get an understanding for how this thing lays out on the bass. So enjoy everyone um, and I'll uh, see all y'all soon for another Melody video.